if you want to master testing ASMD components on the board without removing it, this video is for you. I'm going to teach you how to test ICs, ceramic capacitors, transistors, ASMD resistors, voltage regulators, crystal diodes, shunt resistors, zener diodes, 8-pin MOSFETs, 3-terminal diodes, and much more. Let's get started. But please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video. And for anyone who wants to accelerate learning, I can be your mentor. All links in the description. So first, let's select the continuity mode on the multimeter. Let's begin with ceramic capacitors the most failed and shorted component in every board so to test the ceramic capacitor easy one probe here another probe here we get a high rating this is good ceramic capacitor this one here so no beep no continuity means good one this one here also same thing this one same so guys once you didn't get a short like this means the ceramic capacitor is serviceable. Let's move on to diodes. This is basically ASMD diodes. Here we have cathode anode. Cathode anode. Why do you see this stripe or line over here means this is cathode. So the black probe on the cathode, the red probe on the anode, we get a reading in the multimeter. About 190. This one here, the same reading. But if I swap the probes, means the red probe on the cathode, the black probe on the anode, nothing, no reading. Means this one is good diode. Let's check this one also here. No reading. When I swap the probes, means good diode. What about the ICs? The ICs basically I'll give you three methods. Of course, the good method is by using the data sheet and check inputs and outputs. But the data sheet is not available all the time. But don't worry, I'll give you three methods that you will use to check the serviceability of ICs without the data sheet. The first method is by checking the ceramic capacitors connected to the IC or around the IC. All ICs you will find ceramic capacitors around. It could be one, two or more. This one also here, as you can see, we have ceramic capacitor. This one here, we have ceramic capacitors around. All ICs. So the first method is by checking the ceramic capacitors connected to this IC. This one, for example, here, no short. This one here, no short. We have a high reading here, no short. This one, no short, no beep, means the IC is not shorted 100%. The second method is by checking the inputs and outputs. For example, for this IC, it's clear that it gets VCC in this B capacitor. Why? Because here we have a bold and thick line over here means it gets the VCC over here so you can just check here 5 volt here for example we have another IC this is not MOSFET please attention this is IC do you see each pin here is connected to a path always to locate the VCC you have to locate the ceramic capacitor here the IC is faded in this side, in these two pins, because these two pins are connected to the ceramic capacitors. Means we locate the inputs in this side, and we have the outputs in this side. Without the input, the output will not be generated. What about resistors? So to test the resistors, we have to select the ARM option on the multimeter so by the way i change the multimeter because the first one doesn't have all options okay let's begin and test this smd resistor we have one zero three three means the number of zeros means this is a 10 k or 10 kilo ohm resistor or 10,000 ohm so we have to select here in the multimeter 20 k 
So let's check one prop here. Another here, we have to get 10. As you can see in the multimeter, we get 9.8. Means this is a good resistor. Okay, what about this one here? We have here four, seven, three zeros. Three means three zeros means this is a 47K or kilo ohm. Let's check. As you can see, we have 45.6. This is amazing. Okay, what about this one here? The last one, we have two, 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 two zeros means, means this is 2.2 kilo ohm. Okay, 2.2 kilo ohm. So one prop here, another here. As you can see, I get 2.2 ohm. We reach right now the most important moment in this video. How to test voltage regulators. This is basically LT1117. This is a very known voltage regulator. I'm going to teach you how to test it just using the continuity option as you can see here in the multimeter without applying the voltage to its input. So here as you can see this pin is connected to the ground. Do you see here we have this trace means this is the ground here basically we have the input why because we have the ceramic capacitors connected to this part means over here we have the input here we have ground and this is the output so i'll teach you right now how to check it using just the multimeter so the black from here and the input the red probe and the output we get about 200 cent so this side also we have to get about the same reading we have we get 254 okay as you can see about same reading means this is a good voltage regulator if you get any short or you get up line means the voltage regulator is failed what about the shunt resistors those basically are shunt resistors easy you have to go to get about zero in the multimeter okay so all those are good the same as fuses if you didn't get a beep like this means this resistor is damaged now let's talk about switches very important many failure are due to switches and many of technicians ignore and don't pay attention to switches the switch can be the cause of failed boards no power board or even sometimes a dead motherboard when it comes to computers so to test the switch we select the continuity option so for the switch you will find two terminal connected together these two here are connected together and we have these two here also are connected together so between this one here and this one here we have no connection but once i press the switch as you can see connection okay we have connection it means this is a good switch so this one is good but look to this one here so between this pin and this pin we have continuity here also we have continuity here also we have continuity so four pins as you can see connected together all of them means this is a bad switch please attention here we have a zener diode you see we have a blue line but this one as i told you is not zener diode this is a normal diode we have a black line over here so let's check the zener diode so of course here we have the cathode here we have the anode we get a ready good one sometimes you will find some component as you can see like transistors or mosfets three terminal component this is not mosfet this is not transistor we have here d this is double diodes okay this compound contain two diodes inside it i can even prove to you so the black probe here the red probe here you see the first diode here we have the second diode if it is transistor or mosfet we have to get just one reading not two readings the same for this one here first diode second diode but this one here for example this is a mosfet look if we check these two terminals we get a ready but these two here no ready do you see we have just one diode 
have no reading. The same for the transistor. For the MOSFET, we have Q. But for double diodes, we have D, as you can see. So please pay attention and please never replace a diode with a transistor or a transistor with a diode. Because it is three terminals, it doesn't mean it is a transistor or a MOSFET. So please attention. Thank you very much. I hope you understand. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. And for anyone who wants to accelerate learning, you can join me in my Patreon where you will find many schematics that you can download and many exclusive content. Thank you very much.